hello. Uh, my name is K Rod, and uh, I am trying to learn how to use logic, and so I'm trying to impart some of my knowledge of uh, mixing for bands and audio stuff. It seems like a lot of Logic users, they use it for electronic music, and I'm trying to use it for, uh, you know, band recording and stuff, and it's actually really good for that, and so I'm trying to show some tips and tricks, and this this uh, tutorial is going to be my first one, it's going to be about drum mixing. Hopefully uh, you guys can find uh, some, uh, get, get something out of these tutorials, and uh, let me know, leave some comments, um, and uh, I'll stop trying to say and and uh and enjoy the tutorial, thanks. I remember when I was first starting to record bands or record my own band, mixing drums was always a mystery to me, so hopefully I can help some people out. Um, so the first thing that I did was I packed all of my uh, takes to, all, all of my drums to a single folder of drums. That's just going to make it easier to work with, and every time I open up the mixer, um, they'll all open up together in there, so that's going to be cool. Um, and then just to make it less confusing, I'm going to hide all of these other ones. Okay, so now we're going to go into the drum folder. So here here they are. This is just completely dry. They're completely unmixed. Um, let's take a listen. Okay, so we got some pretty decent sounds when we recorded. Um, and so these are probably going to be pretty fun to mix. The one thing is, if I solo these snare tracks, uh, let's take a listen. I'm kind of missing some of the beef that I'm going to want for this song. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to sample a snare drum um, in Logic without any plugins. Um, this is pretty cool. This uses the audio to score functionality. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a software instrument track because we're actually going to create some MIDI hits out of all these snare hits and there's a fast and easy way to do it here. So and then we'll just name him snare sample. Okay. So now, um, with that track selected, I'm going to go into the sample editor for this track and we're going to let's widen it out so we can see it a little bit. So here's all of our snare hits in the sample editor, right? Let's make it nice and big. Um, each of these is pretty much one hit. Uh, here's like a roll, here's some kind of a build up. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go factory audio to score. And um, it's going to give us some controls, but if you look here, it's already grabbing them pretty good. Each one of these hits is going to trigger a MIDI note um, of this velocity. So it actually kind of picks up the velocity of the drummer. It's a really cool way to trigger, dr tr trigger drums. You can raise the sensitivity or lower it. Um, so you pretty much only want it to grab your actual transients. Um, so like all these, these are probably kick drums or hi-hats or something. And so if it's picking up those, it's actually going to trigger a snare hit for each one. And that's not what we want. Okay, so now it looks like we're sitting pretty good. Um, so we're just going to hit process. And what it's going to do is it creates a MIDI track of all of those snare hits on our snare sample track. Uh, they're all on different channels, and they're, they're mainly on C3. Um, but we're going to probably we're going to trigger it with an EXS 24 instrument, and so. We need them all to be on whatever the snare channel is, which is always default to D1, this little guy right here. And as it stands, we're not going to get any snare hits, because nothing's going to trigger D D1. We're going to get a bunch of things like triggering tom-toms and cowbells and stuff, but we want snares. So we're going to use the event list. If you have the MIDI track selected, then you just go to lists, um, and then the event list actually is already going to pop up. And so then there's all of our notes in that MIDI region. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this top one and we're going to assign it to D1. You can either grab it and move it up and down like this, or you can just type in D1. Okay, then there's a, a nifty command and there's not a, a menu item for it, but if you go Shift V, 
shift V is going to take every single MIDI event following that and assign it to D1. So for what we're doing, that is absolutely perfect. Okay. And then if you notice, we have some things on channel 2, which channel 2 isn't going to trigger anything. Um, so we could go and we could go to each one and pull it down, but I mean, there's hundreds of hits here. So you can actually select all, edit, select all, and there's another function for note events that says voices to channels, and it's just going to put all of these voices on the same channel. So now they're all at D1. Okay, and then the last thing, you have to kind of have a background in MIDI a little bit to uh, realize what we're doing here, but w when you have a velocity on a MIDI instrument, the velocity is going to be anywhere from 0 to 127. Um, and as you can see, it's pulling up, like, they're probably in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and then some of these are, like, way high in the hundreds. And so we're, we're probably going to want to raise the level. So, you, so I go and I take all the ones that are higher than, than the average, and I drag them down a little bit. We don't want to lower them too much because we still want them to be louder than the surrounding, but, like, look at this one here. We got 42, 103, 21, and and 39 so the difference in velocity is quite a bit uh, so once they're all a little bit lower now we can again select them all we're just going to grab the top one and raise it up so now what we're doing is now we've gotten them all of the events into a, a higher level so it's still going to be as dynamic as it was before but now we're going to have a hotter level to send to our EXS24 instrument. Okay, so now, we're, now that we're done with that, we're done with our event list so we can close that out. So now what we have on this track is a bunch of notes all on D1 that are each going to tr trigger uh, a sample hit with whatever snare we choose. Um, so I'm going to go into the snare sample track and I'm going to choose an EXS24 instrument We'll do mono since we're only going to be triggering a snare drum. Um, and I'm going to go into factory, drums and percussion. And the kit that I've been using for this band is Indie Kit. Um, and so now we can listen to that snare drum. Okay. So that's. So that's that sample, um, completely in time with all the other ones. It's, it's awesome. Since I like to work with audio and I'd rather not have this random instrument hanging out, um, I'm actually just going to mix this guy down to an audio track. So to do that, you just right click it and go down to the export as audio file. And it's automatically going to just make a new one for that. Let's see, where in Mary you go around, I want to put it in bounces. And we'll just go snare sample. So now it's going to grab that. It's made me a new audio file. So now I'll just delete this track. And then I'll, we're going to go into our media browser, our bin, and there's our new sample. You just drag that in. So we're going to rename this guy Snare Sample. And rename it in the range. Okay, and we'll just put it up here. Okay, so now we have all of the sounds that we want, um, and now we have a nice new kicks or snare sample sound. So now we're going to actually start mixing them. So that was kind of a little bit of editing and, and working. Okay.